Again, a warm welcome to all of you from Cliff India. This is Anandesh Gupta. I am heading the analytics in India and so analytics and software in India. So today, as we all know, we are going to talk about the introduction to customized scorecards and how it helps in terms of the underwriting process. So the way this uh, webinar will go, just for people who have joined late. Uh, so we will have first 40, 45 minutes where we'll talk in the of the presentation and we'll go through the presentation. And then uh, there will be a 10, 15 minutes time where the questions will be answered. You can put your questions in the chat box and you can, uh, during the presentation itself, as and when the, we, we see the questions, we'll try to answer them during the presentation or during the 10, 15 times. Uh, 10 15 minutes that we have kept for the presentation. So, uh, again, uh, let us start. So, I will just go on, uh, go out of this screen and I will give my put, put, put the presentation on the screen. Thank you. Let us start. So, uh, I hope all of you can uh, see my screen. As I said, that the today's topic is introduction to customized scorecard and how it helps us in the underwriting process and the origination process. So let us move. Uh, how will the how will the presentation go about? So uh, we will take a few minutes to give you an understanding of Cliff. I'm sure many of you already know about Cliff, Cliff but uh, for some of you who have been joined for the first time, uh, we, are, we are interacting for the first time. So we will give a small introduction of what we do globally as well as in India. Then we will move into the main part of this presentation. Where the first thing is why do we need the customized forecast will be addressed. Then we'll go on each and every section and put forward our, our uh, points and all the same. So moving, moving on, let us talk about Cliff. So Cliff is headquartered in Bologna, Italy, and it has been over 30 years now that Cliff is in business. It has presence in 50 countries and has office in more than 30 plus countries now. It has credit bureaus in 20 countries and uh, it is works across the four continents in the world today. So this is about Cliff, Cliff globally. In terms of India, we have two entities. One is Cliff Highmark, of which is the uh, credit bureau, as many of you already know. And uh, Cliff Highmark is the first full service credit bureau in India, in the sense full service, in the sense that it has uh, both the microfinance, the consumer lending, as well as the commercial lending databases along with it. And um, it has a sizable amount of database because of all these three things together. One important feature of Cliff Highmark is that it is the only bureau till date which can give you a combination CIR of combining of inputs from microfinance, consumer bureau, or consumer bureau and commercial bureau, and give a combined CIR for that. And this is helpful even for the customized folder perspective. We will go back to this again, this point again when we are talking about in the presentation. In terms of the second company, Cliff Solution, that we do the entire analytics and the solution side of it, where products have been developed and the technology setup is here. From the Cliff Solutions India, our headquarters is in Pune. We serve the entire uh, Asia market and some parts of North America and European market as well. Uh, so this is about Cliff. In terms of analytics, we work as we have a team of 50 plus data scientists sitting in out of Pune and Bombay, and uh, we work across these four important areas: analytics, consulting, decision software, and decision intelligence. And uh, our team has been working extensively in Indian market as well as in the other mar Asian markets as well. So, just uh, this is what we are going to talk. This is what we have in terms of the overview of Cliff. We will now move into the main section of the presentation. So, why do we need a customized book? So, let us first uh, look into the business problem itself. So, what is the business problem at hand? So we are getting applications from people who have applied for loan. We have to assess them for their riskiness. This is the main business problem. Let us look at the process in which this entire thing happens. So first say, let us assume that there are a thousand applications which has come through to our LOS. And what is the first step? One first it comes to our LOS, then uh, 
uh, the information that they have put into the application forms are being looked into and some initial kick, uh, knockout rules initial knockout rules are applied on them in terms when i say initial knockout rules typically what are they like age less than 20 will not give any loan age greater than 70 will not give any loans no bank back no bank uh, statement for the last three months will not give any loan this kind of uh, initial checks are being put into the thing using the data that is collected from the customers itself so say for example out of thousand 50 cases go out now for this 950 cases which are there first we hit the bureau and we get the bureau information for it yes there will be some hits and some moment customers as of now for the sake of simplicity let us assume all are hit customers it does not change much if it is in Mohit customers, but let us go for the simplicity set, all our key customers. Now, 950 customers, we have got the bureau. Since then what happens is the second kickoff, a second knockout uh, uh, rules kicks in, while we look into the bureau level variables to do some more filters, in the sense, the negative pin codes. Bureau already are registering certain negative pin codes. So remove the cases which are coming from the negative pin codes. Two, it can be that they have these customers have a 90 plus jelly point at the point of application. So let's not consider them at all. Remove them uh, at that point. Say from 950, we reach to 800 or 850 uh, by doing this kind of bureau based knockouts. Then comes the major part of the should we give loan to 850? Answer is obviously no. So we have to now do the more assessment in terms of risk limits. Now, if you think of what are the major factors that determine the riskiness of the customers. Now, typically, uh, we have seen, we can think of two broad level heads which determine the riskiness of the customers. One is the uh, demographic variables or the pharmographic variables for the companies who are applying for the loan. And two is the past credit information or the credit value, uh, past credit values. Let us first look into the demographic variables. What happens in terms of the demographic variables? It is captured during the application stage, right? Now, how do we use the demographic variables to uh, get a uh, understanding of the riskiness? Here comes three different aspects of it. In the sense, if I am a existing NBFC or a bank, and I have a, I am looking into a scorecard for a, 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 looking into the process for my existing product. Then I will have a sufficient. I will. I might have a sufficient amount of history, historical data of my applications that are already coming in. So I can develop a application scorecard in using my own data which I have collected and get a score. From, the, from that, which will talk about the riskiness of the customers from the demographic data. But then there are cases, a huge section of people who are either existing players or new players, but are launching a new product or have an existing product, but does not have sufficient amount of data with them. In that case, how do we use the demographic data to get the riskiness? Here we come with a solution called expert application scorecard where we utilize the understanding of our market understanding in terms of the riskiness of the variables that are captured in the demographic variables as it, and also how the other players have performed in this and we take inputs from the client and we come up with the expert application score now this both the uh, type of scorecard that i talked about from a demographic variable standpoint both the application scorecard, statistical application scorecard, and the export application scorecard. These are customized scorecards because these are developed from a small point of view of the client's own data which the client is capturing. But today's discussion on customized scorecard is actually not catering to this part. Today's discussion caters to the second part, second broadhead, which is the past credit information. So now when we look into the past credit information, the first thing that comes in our mind is that the bureau's, bureau score itself is a reflection of the past credit information of the variable of the customer. And we look into the past bureau score and take a decision based on that. Now, let us first think a bit on how the bureau score is developed. 
The Bureau's score is developed taking into account of all the players in residing in the entire country, all the products and all the ticket sizes and everything combined, a Bureau's score is created. Now, all of you are in the market and you are much more expert than me. You already know that uh, uh, there is so much variation in the riskiness, the factors that impact the risk, even from product to product, from geography to geography, from ticket size to ticket size. So given this situation, given the so much variation that is there in the market in terms of uh, the riskiness, in terms of product to product, uh, ticket size to ticket size, geography to geography, type of customers. So, for example, uh, the HDFC, the SBIs of the world will get a certain type of customers with a good history, while the NBFCs of the world will get some different kind of customers with different kind of history. So, all much so much variation that exists. A generic scorecard, like a bureau score, can at best give us an indication of the riskiness but will not be a true predictor of the riskiness. So how do we handle the situation? Herein comes the importance of the customized scorecard or what we call in Cliff the look-alike scorecard. What we do in terms of the look-alike scorecard, we try to understand from the client a set of segments where the client is focusing into and believes that their customers will fall into this segment. We will go into the segment definition in some time. Once we know the set of segments that the client is focusing into and, and all their customers most likely will fall into that segment, we extract the data from the bureau for that particular segment and the credit score is developed, our score card is developed on that data. Now this code card, when it's developed for a particular client, is based on the lookalike definition that this client has given us. So it is a customized solution and the IP of the client himself who is deciding the lookalike segment or deciding to develop a lookalike model. So this is the point on why which we need customized scorecard because Euroscope, a generic scope and will at this can give an indicative figure but not able to capture the essence of the riskiness and hence the need of localized work analysis. Now, the more major important factor of localized scorecard first is to understand the segment. So, what is how do we define the segment of a localized scorecard? So, first we go to the clients, the, the client for which we are developing the scorecard, and we discuss with the client, we understand from them that what is the product that they are looking for in terms of the uh, scorecard they want to develop for? What are the geographies that they are looking for in terms of the cities or the inputs or the states that they want to focus into? What is the ticket size that they are focusing into? Then what is the peer group? Peer group is a very important thing in the sense which of the customers they feel will have, which of the clients, which of the competitors they feel will have customers similar to their base. So for example, we are developing a scorecard for uh, NBFC1 and uh, um, NBFC1 believes that bank ABC and NBFC234 have similar customers, will have similar customers as NBFC1. So then that will fall into the peer group section. This entire list with geography, which we have group, what product, what ticket size is something that is discussed and agreed upon with the client before we develop the model. The next part is in terms of the disbursement period. Typically, the models are developed uh, looking into the most recent data. So we try and obviously a performance window of one year or six months is also kept. So typically we try to take as much recent data as possible to develop this one. So, one important factor here is that if you, are, if you look at the need of the customized scorecard, it was required because Bureau score was generic and we are focusing on to more focused approach to our segment. And hence, the importance of the segment definition becomes very important. The success of a lookalike scorecard lies enormously on how are we defining these segments and therefore 
a good amount of discussions, good amount of understandings, and good amount of data seeing in terms of viewer data, seeing the trends, seeing the patterns, understanding from that is used to develop this, to define this segments. So, so assume we have developed this, defined this segment. We have gone back to the bureau and we have extracted the data from the bureau for this particular segment. The next thing, as I was mentioning in the very beginning, is that uh, the policy rules. So there are two kinds of policy rules. One is policy rules developed from the customer side itself, which most likely have already been used even before the bureau is takes in. If not, then you can apply this in those are in terms of the age, those are in terms of the income, the bank balance they have, and all those things. And second is some policy rules based on the bureau, which can be the pin code, which can be the whether they are doing when whether they have any 90 plus DPD uh, loan at the point of time of application. So those cases are removed. So say we have extracted a lookalike sample of uh, one lakh data. And using these filters from one lakh, we reach to 80,000 uh, data or 70,000 data, whatever, depending on the uh, filters that we apply. Once this data is created, the next part that we do is in terms of the development of the data, uh, data development of the model in the data. Now, before we go into the development of the model in the data, let us understand what kind of variables we are using to define the riskiness of the customers. One is a MOB, there's a monthly book, utilization, how much utilization has happened, what kind of trade lines they have with the bureau, what is the delinquency in each of the trade lines that they have in the bureau, what is the current balance, and demographics in terms of what are the demographics which are captured in the bureau. So these are broadly the type of information that are captured in the bureau and which are used in the model. For example, if they have taken up, another important factor is whether they have applied for, whether they have taken a personal loan uh, in the last six months or seven months, if they are applying for a personal loans, if they have taken up another uh, loan in the last three months, those kind of information are also used in terms of trade lines information as well. So these are broadly the type of variables which are used. What we do is that first we, when we get the data from the bureau, the most important factor now is to define the target variable in the sense, what should be my bad definition? Now, given the uh, typical statistical approach, this should do a real rate and a vintage analysis in the sense, how much um, amount of bad rate is capturing the highest amount of uh, write-offs, how they are moving from 30 to 60, 60 to 90, uh, all of this kind of things and what is the time they are taking to movement from that, what is the highest capture happening, the capture rate, the conversion rate. These are typically used to develop the bad rate definition. But superimposing each and everything is the business need and the business understanding of the situation today. For example, uh, in India, we had seen, even before the corona, we had seen that there has been a sudden decline in the, sudden increase in the delinquency and people, because of the stress in the economy. And we were seeing uh, more delinquent customers at a very uh, stringent buckets itself. So we have developed some scorecards with clients who wanted to go ahead with a 30 DPD for 12 months as a definition. We also have gone ahead with 90 DPD 12 months, which is a standard result definition. And it can be twice 30, twice 60, also depending on the nature of the product. For example, for a housing loan, a twice 30 in six months, or twice 30 in two years, or one year, or a 160 in one year is a better value. In for a business loan, it can be different. So, uh, so given this, the importance here is to define the target variable clearly because that is what exactly we are predicting on what will be the riskiness of the customer in terms of what will be the risk. Risk of going 90 DPD, risk of going 30 DPD or not, that is very important and that needs to be defined. So, uh, if you have any question, uh, just to like this, if you have any question, please 
uh, uh, send the question to the chat. We will obviously not be able to answer all the questions, but we will definitely reply you back with all our answers uh, uh, for each of the questions in the letter for stage itself. Uh, but moving on, once we decide on the bad grade, then the variables that are being used, this MOB, delinquency, utilization, balance, red lines, demographics, these broad heads, around 1000 to 150, well, 1000, 1050 kind of variables are created based on all of this um, broad heads of variable, broad dimensions that are being captured. Now, once that is done, sorry, once that is done, then we go ahead in developing the model. Before we go ahead in developing the model, an important aspect that comes into the picture is in terms of, uh, before we go ahead in developing the model, the important aspect that comes into the picture is in terms of how are we ensuring that the model will perform, is performing good, or the model will be holding good. So therefore, there's a need of dividing the data into development and the validation sample developing the model on the development base and validating it in the validation base. Validation base is typically out of time. So say, for example, we are developing the model using 2017 to 2018 disbursement data. We are validating on 2018 to 2019 disbursement data. Some kind of this kind of things are used. And how a, import, uh, how a performance of the model is checked? It is checked in terms of the power that the model is capturing in terms of the Gini coefficient and the rank coordinate and stability. So moving on to the next slide. So uh, uh, as I was mentioning, when we are developing a model, typically three important aspects are looked into. One is whether the model has a discriminatory power in the sense whether the model is able to discriminate the goods and the bads properly. So that is measured through the Gini coefficient. Number two is the accuracy, whether the rank ordering of the variables are holding across the bad grade. In the sense, the highest risk customers, as far as the model, should have the highest bad grade, follow, and the second highest risk customers have the second highest bad grade, and so on. And the other is PSI, which is the stability of the model. In the sense, the variables that are used in the model whether they are holding stable in a validation database as well, in the sense of the variable distribution. So, for example, we have a uh, set of lookalike sample that uh, from a MOV variable perspective, say we have 70% of the customers with more than five years in Bureau. I'm just giving an example here. And that is in the development sample. So, if this distribution changes to only 50% of customers with more than five years experience in the bureau in the validation sample in that situation we will not be the, the, the variable is not stable and this variable needs to be looked into and changed so that is the important factor for which we use a psi index once the model is developed then comes the importance of how do we use this model to for, uh, take the final decision. So here you can see a grid of a customized bureau score, customized lookalike score, and the bureau score. And uh, we will delve, delve deeper into this section a bit more through a, a case study, and that will be a better way of doing it. And we'll move into it right now. So assume that we have developed a model, and this is a, a live case study. We have developed a model for a particular customer for a particular product. And uh, this data was taken from October 17 to September 18 uh, dispersal period, applying all the filters in terms of geography, in terms of uh, peer group, in terms of ticket size, all these uh, filters have been put. And based on that, this uh, data was extracted and the variables were created. And finally, we developed the model on this data. Uh, once we developed the model of this data, we saw that the uh, in terms of the performance, in terms of the Gini coefficient, in terms of the case, in terms of the PSI, the, man, the model was holding good and all the criteria that I mentioned in the earlier slide was uh, going good. Uh, that is the second part of the, so that's where we were seeing uh, the model was holding good. The second part is that 
how this model is adding value. As I was mentioning, that this is where we will elaborate further. Now, if you look at this slide, so there is a grid uh, uh, of the customized scorecard that we have got uh, in terms of uh, the um, uh, localized scorecard that we developed and also the bureau risk score. So we are getting some questions now, and uh, you respond to these questions. Give us some time. Okay. Uh, so uh, the first side, that is this point nine point eight five point three, this shows the percentage of people who falls in each of these buckets, and this shows the bad grade. So if you look at, if you have, if you would have not used the localized score card or the custom score. And if you use only the bureau score, you would have assuming you would have removed all the high bureau score, the high risk customers from the bureau score, that is the low bureau score customers, and you would have got you removed, and they had a bad rate of 4.2 percent, 4.42 percent, and they are having a uh, population of 29.2 percent. But now that you have a custom score card, which is developed using your segment you develop on your segment which is more near to you your product it is telling you that among the customers who are at a high risk in terms of bureau there is a segment of 10.5% uh, and 8.9% of customers who have a sufficiently lower bad rate compared to the other revenue. So you might not remove the entire high bureau score customers. You can only remove this 7.3% bad rate customer, that is a 9.8%. You might continue with this too. Similarly, uh, for each of the other things also, you can make a solution around the same. So first, so what, what is the first benefit of this uh, customized scorecard? The first benefit of this customized scorecard is that it helps you in identifying some low risk and medium risk segment from the high bureau risk segment customers, which you wouldn't have given loan, but they are actually good in your uh, segment. You wouldn't have given loan otherwise if you don't have this kind of a scorecard. So you are now considering those customers as well. That's the number one part. Number two point is that this grid helps you up with the option of maximizing your approval rate subject to a given bad rate or minimizing your bad rate subject to a given approval rate. For example, in this situation, we might decide to remove the entire high segment of the customized bureau score and go ahead with the rest of the customers. There's only one decision. The other decision in, an, in the case that we have developed, the customer decided only to remove this 9.8% which fall into the high high segment, and this 5.3% which fall into the high and medium segment. So instead of removing 29.2% customers, they are actually removing much lesser customers, and the bad rate that they are getting is lesser than the 4.2% bad rate. Because the overall segment bad rate for this was much lower, lesser than the 4.42% bad rate. So therefore, uh, overall there was a gain in terms of approval rate that can happen. That is one. The other point is this grid also helps you in terms of giving a risk-based pricing. Why I say risk-based pricing, I will explain a bit in now. So as I was saying that you might decide to remove only these two segments, 7.23 and 4.84% bad rate, the high, high and high medium segment. Why look, a question can come is that what about this 4.38%? The 4.38% falls into the lowest customers. 4.38% also is a high bad rate. Why should I not remove them? It's a very valid point. It's a very valid push answer, question to that. But you also think of it that each of these cells that are there in this matrix, in this three by three matrix, have a very different bad grade. And you can think of doing a risk based pricing for each of these segments. You can say that I will go ahead and approve these customers who fall in the high and low segment of which are bad grade of 4.38%. But I will charge them a much higher interest rate. 
following which I, I can also create another segment of which is 3.46. I will charge them another kind of uh, interest rate, which is the second highest rate of interest rate. These two segments I can use together, the 2.51% and 2.59% and charge them a similar bad rate, similar interest rate. From this, this to again 1.94, 1.53, I can charge them a similar interest rate and 1.19, I can charge the lowest interest rate. So therefore, this green, this fact that you have developed the customized score card helps you in approving more customers, but approve them with a risk-based pricing and charge more from the riskier customer, charge less from the lower riskier customers. This will definitely have an impact in your profitability and will ensure that you are uh, focusing, you, you are giving more uh, give one piece to the lowest customers and you are creating more hurdles for the highest customers. So this is in a nutshell what a bureau score, a customized scorecard will have an advantage over the bureau score. So let us point out those one is that we are able to take out a segment of low risk and medium risk from the high risk bureau segment, which we would have removed completely earlier. Now we are able to consider them because they are actually having low bandwidth in my uh, in my particular uh, portfolio, and we might still decide to approve them. Two, it will help us maximize our approval rate subject to a given bad rate or minimize our bad rate subject to a given approval rate. Three, and the most important of it, it helps us in deciding to, to go to a risk-based pricing kind of a notion where we are able to charge differently for each and every point. Here, let me take a step back. And one of the important factors that I'm sure many of you are thinking, and I got a question also around that right now, is that what about the NPC customers? It's a very, very valid question given the type of market that we are focusing into where we are seeing uh, uh, a lot of customers who are at least for products like CD, products like uh, low ticket size personal loans. We will see a lot of products like two million loan. We will see a lot of NPC customers coming into the picture. Now, obviously for the NPC customers, we don't have a bureau score or a, or a bureau history to develop a lookalike scorecard like we have been speaking here. So what we do in case of NTC customers is two things. We still have the information that are available that have been captured in the application form. As I mentioned in the first slide itself, that there are two dimensions of riskiness. One is through the past credit information and other is through the demographic information. So we are having those information which are captured in the demographic uh, information in terms of the application form. We can use that application form information and develop an expert application scorecard, which can guide you in terms of what exactly is the riskiness, at least from a demographic standpoint. From the bureau variable standpoint, yes, while we don't have the bureau variable bureau information about these customers, we can still go ahead see what kind of demographic information is captured in the bureau. Typically, in code, the amount of loan they have applied for and the age are the three demographic information which are captured in the bureau. So we can develop a grade of pin codes and age and uh, amount of loan applied and create the three by three matrix and uh, uh, a model also on the, using these three variables, so, so different segments using these three variables, and this then they develop a model using these three variables and a combination of them to come up with a scorecard for them, which is a no hit lookalike scorecard from the bureau. The difference here is that it does not use the bureau variables like the delinquency, the MOBs, and everything at a personal level. But yes, it will be able to use uh, aggregated level information about the delinquency, about the MOBs, about what kind of customers uh, delinquency is coming from this particular pin code for this particular age group. Those kind of information will be used to develop this kind of a model. So for hit lookalike scorecard for the customers who are hit, you can develop the model at a customer level itself and get uh, understanding for it. 
the moment localized scorecard you can do a segmentation based on your age your uh, um, pin code and your um, the amount of loan that is, they have applied and you can create a scorecard based on that so uh, so this is the thing that you can do for the novel as well as the kid and so this customized score back in this bands will vote for new hit as well but for no hit will not have the bureau score here we can put the, the demographic score and we take a decision based on that so uh, as we are almost reaching uh, uh, 40 minutes now uh, uh, so i am opening up for the question and session i have already got uh, one question which has come to me say saying that you have mentioned ticket size as one of the factors in deciding the data set but how does it matter but yes it matters why because for example uh, i am developing a school card for a personal loan what we have seen from the bureau data the trends that we have seen is that the riskiness of the customers vary drastically across the ticket sizes the factors also which impact the riskiness very drastically across the ticket sizes for example customers with less than 50, between 50000 to 2 lakh personal loans have applied between that period will have a very different bad debt from customers who have applied from 2 lakh to 5 lakh and customers who have applied for more than 5 lakh or more than 10 lakh or more than 20 lakh customers same holds true for sme the customers who have sme loans who have applied for less than 10 lakhs and customers who have applied for more than 10 lakhs more than 20 lakhs more than 30 lakhs the variation in terms of riskiness and the variation in terms of the factors that impact the riskiness is very different for this set of customers and hence ticket size is an important value uh, you can post your questions in the chat i have got one question right now which talks about covid 19 question mark so i guess you are asking about what will be the impact of covid 19 uh, my answer to that will be that uh, it's yet to be seen obviously but we all as everybody is saying and we all and we all know that we are looking at a very different world and uh, a very stressed uh, few months that you might see in the next few months um, it all depends on how fast we are able to uh, stall this uh, progress of COVID-19, so it will depend on that. But yes, um, one important perspective, if I link it to the scorecard description today, is that uh, obviously the data that we captured during this period will not be much useful because of the monitorium announced and everything. But definitely scorecards helps in this kind of situations because in this kind of situation, it is more important to answer, understand who are my willful defaulters and who are defaulting just because they are in pressure of such a economic stress. So during, because of that, school cards are very useful because they at least have, give a better understanding of who are my willful defaulters. Okay, so let's get some more questions. Okay, okay, so I've got another question uh, right now from a person now who is who's, who's saying that uh, I have, uh, so I'm working in a housing loan perspective and I have a lot of data which is unstructured data in terms of the uh, uh, notes that have been captured. Uh, how I use those notes, the, uh, the notes that have been captured in terms, of, uh, in terms of the personal discussion, how do we use that? So, so to answer your question is that uh, obviously the notes that you are capturing for the from the personal discussions is again a customized data from a point of view of the client. It, it is part of the demographic database that we were discussing, and this data can be used as a, uh, this data can be used and nurtured to create variables from there and can be used as a variable here. In, in your application scorecard, but not in the lookalike scorecard, because lookalike scorecard is developed on the lookalike segment, which has data from your peers, and hence your peers will not have the data, and you, we as a bureau will not have that data. Uh, okay, so there was a question on months tenure or two months tenure. Uh, I am not very clear on this question. Whoever has asked this question, if you can uh, elaborate this much. 
uh, it will be better. Yeah, so the question is whether the solution is based on your requirement. Yes, we will be able to develop the solution based on your requirement itself. The, it's, the lookalike definition itself will be developed in terms of your segment, your understanding, your requirements, and based on that, this solution will be developed. Uh, so that is how it is being developed. In terms of that question, in terms of the tenure, uh, so tenure of whether we are looking at a riskiness of um, uh, uh, one month or two months, that depends on the trend of the data, and we will decide when we are developing the model. Okay, so the other question is version of source. So let us first say, sir, as a very good question, let us first say, sir, that this is a customized scorecard that is developed on your school, on your uh, segment. And this is not exactly the bureau score, but this is a better reflection of your bureau score. As we had shown that a combination of bureau score and the customized score gives you a better data as we had shown here. So as of now, bureau score will have the version of score uh, issue and we will typically from a cliff standpoint, we are going ahead with gen two scores for both the consumer bureau and the commercial bureau as of now. And uh, uh, in this kind of models, when we are developing the customized scorecard, one important question that comes here is that whether we are planning to use the bureau score also as a variable to define the riskiness of the customers in the customized scorecard. Some people do, some people don't. Uh, and we are open to it. But when whatever version we use is the version that you are using and gives the latest version. Okay, so uh, for the questions. So just to tell you that whoever is uh, having questions right now and uh, or, or want to contact us right now with further questions, you can send us an email at interact at prefhimark.com. And we will be able to answer you as soon as we get the questions. All the questions that you're answering, asking today, or you're sending in this portal, or you're sending to interact at prefimark.com will be addressed uh, uh, and answered shortly. Okay, so we have got another question. The, this question talks about that you have talked about segments, but uh, we are, I'm into uh, SME lending. And what about industry? Is industry a segment? Very good question, sir. Uh, ideally, yes. The risk uh, pattern varies drastically across different industries. Now, we know that, for example, a uh, mining industry, the risk pattern or uh, uh, risk pattern in the FMCG will be different and it will depend a lot on the economic situation, economic space that the persons are going through. So given this uh, point of view, Ideally, it is better to develop scorecard at an industry level or use industry as a variable in the scorecard. And we have done both. We have developed scorecard at an industrial sector level, localized scorecards. And we have also developed scorecard at uh, overall level with industry sector as a variable. And this is a good point in which we definitely can be emphasized in this localized scorecards. So, uh, if you have any further questions. Okay, so there's a question saying customers. I'm actually not very sure about this question. Uh, um, so anyways, so we'll uh, take it off. Okay, so uh, so now let us move out from this and let us just yeah. So thank you, thanks a lot for having the patience to hear me for the next last 40-45 uh, minutes. We are we are able to address some of your questions, I guess. And uh, if not, then as I said, please uh, send us the questions at interact at ifimark.com. We will try to respond to the question answers questions as fast as possible, and we will try to get back to you as fast as possible. Uh, uh, so, uh, 
some of the questions are still coming that uh, after the current crisis is over, when are you going to come with new version of sports? So, sir, uh, this is a very good question, but we will have to wait for a few time to decide on uh, this because, as I said, that as of now, the building is collapsing. We are seeing the impact of the uh, COVID-19 happening. Once and only once when the COVID-19 is completely gone, then only we can expect, we can measure the extent of damage that it has caused. And then only we can come out with take a decision on what kind of time frame we will either that there is a need of developing a, a separate version or whether we have or if yes then what kind of time frame we will take for it and if no what kind of changes we might do that we will come on that another question i uh, saw that can we use this solution before cv check of the customer based on score we want to reject the bad rate customers yes this can be done and this can be used at that level also and definitely it can be used at that level also so there is uh, another question that script code and civil sports are more suitable for long run um, long tenure products uh, uh, how can we use this code effectively to capture short tenure loan behavior like one month tenure or two months tenure uh, this is a very valid question sir so as i say that the bureau score, given that it is generic, it does not really uh, it does not really have uh, the it, because it, it follows the standard definition. Therefore, it tries to predict the riskiness from a point of view of one year and from a point of view of ninety degrees. Now, this kind of products where the Tenure is one month or two months. Here, the effectiveness of this customized scorecard becomes important. Therefore, why? Because we are not dependent on the bureau score and we are developing the, the bad rate also depending on your product. So, therefore, we will have a different uh, we will have a different definition for it, and we will use a different definition to develop this kind of uh, scorecard for this. Uh, Lower tenure perhaps the answer is yes. Uh, in terms of bureau score, does not really help in this part of lower tenure product, but a customized scorecard will definitely do. There is one question: what are the characteristics of the scorecard? The characteristics of the scorecard are uh, important, as I mentioned, the variables that are captured, like the MOB, the delinquency, the um, uh, trade lines. When they are taking the trade lines, when they are moving from one product to another product, what is the current balance? All of these are the typical variables that are used as the uh, characteristics of the product. Uh, do you have alternative ways of underwriting and scorecard development for NBC customers? The answer is yes, sir. We have that. We have a product called Psychometric Scorecard. We are not talking about it today. But uh, we can get back to you on that, which actually caters to the NPC customers itself. Uh, so, do we need to create a custom model basis COVID-19? Uh, it is yet to be seen. We can take a decision later on, but it might be required. And uh, so, there are some more questions. Can uh, okay okay I think we have answered all the questions as we have got here. If we have not answered anything, we will get back to you. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, we will get back to you um, on this. Uh, and uh, this thing is pin number impact the scorecard. If yes, how? So. Yes, so from, from point of view of pin code, we don't believe to use pin code as a variable in the school fund. We have talked about policy rules, which are the knockout rules which are applied initially when an application comes from the LOS, but before the scorecard card kicks in, knockout rules are applied to remove certain cases. We ascribe, we advise to use pin code at that stage and using the bureau we can identify certain negative pin codes that these are the pin codes where high risk customers are there then we 
remove those customers, those pin codes, and we develop the model on the rest of the pin codes. So that's about it. So finally, uh, a big, big, big thank you to all of you that you have joined this uh, the same uh, webinar and have taken, given your valuable one hour to us. Stay safe in this present situation. That's all from us. Thank you from the Crypt team. Thank you.